Bendy. Here's Khaleesi. Here's Ben Bendy. South Africa, the reigning world champions, are quite possibly the best example of a team with a defence-dominated game plan. And they continue to prove that outstanding defence that stops the opposition scoring, even when you think a try is inevitable, in addition to a defence that provides the team with its own scoring opportunities, is essential to winning rugby. And there's so much clever stuff going on, and I'm going to help you enjoy it too. One area that stands out for me as being a true thing of beauty is South Africa's consistent ability to dominate the contact area, either through their aggressive counter ruck or the jewel in their defensive crown, the jackal. Something that they consistently can sell at regardless of opposition. So, the question this video focuses on is, what's so special about the South African jackal? And to answer that question, we'll take a look at three big areas. We look at the use of kick pressure and a structured chase to create jackal opportunities. We'll have a look at their high line speed and aggressive dominant tackling that puts the box on the front foot. And also the clever use of defensive underfolds that puts jacklers in the perfect position to do their thing. Let's kick off the analysis. Before we look at the technical aspects of the jackal, it's important to understand how South Africa's defence is designed with ruck pressure and jackals right in its heart. There's no coincidence that we see the same players winning jackal turnovers. The likes of Damian Delende, Quagga Smith, Sia Khaleesi, Stephen Kitsoff and Lucanio Am. These are the players given jackals rights. A free pass to actively search for jackal opportunities and take them when they arise. These are the kind of players trusted with having the physicality, the technical ability and the tactical understanding to legally challenge the ball on a consistent basis. That's because discipline at the ruck area is a key determinant of a team's success. And although even the best get penalised from time to time, there's just too much risk in allowing all players to go for the ball. But more on that later. Next we look at the cornerstone of the box game plan, the box kick, and how that, along with the line press, opens up opportunities. Here, South Africa are inside their own 22, and aim to use the box kick to turn pressure back onto Wales. At the ruck, South Africa have two players side by side at the front of the ruck, to provide enough of a block to prevent a counter ruck, and then two players bound one behind the other, who back up the front two, and also give the ruck its length to protect the kicker. Two heads and two tails is a common way of describing this setup. They also have a kick blocker stood in line with the ball, to give an extra layer of protection for the nine. On the left side, they have Mapimpi, who acts as the head hunter, and will challenge the catcher. Then Sia Khaleesi as the containment, who focus on ensuring that Wales can't break down the blind side. Now this next bit differs depending on the team. Here, Eben Etzebeth, from the open side, cuts straight towards the ball, aiming for the catch zone. And his role, along with Khaleesi and Mapimpi, is to shut the attack down immediately. The left side head also works to the catch zone, while the right side head, both tails and the blocker move into the pass zone. Which is the space the ball could be passed into if the catcher has time. Then finally, Herschel Janchis, the scrum half, chases after his kick, looking for opportunities if the ball is spilled or if a tackle is missed, and also has a little snipe at the ruck, which does enough to draw in four Welsh defenders. Even the threat of a jackal has a huge impact on attacking behaviours. So here, South Africa have 14 men on feet and a full defensive set, while Wales are low on numbers and very narrow. And the combination of these factors sets the box up for their press. Notice off the edge, they press hard, but are connected and generally pushing square. Then, from a centre field ruck, they defend high on the outside, trying to force Wales to play inside. And the closer the ruck gets to the edge, the more aggressive the press. Partly there's fewer variables, so defenders can shoot with confidence. And then we have key jackler, Lucanio Am, nailing a turnover. A mere three phases after the kick. But there's so much more going on here that places the jackal front and centre of the whole defensive strategy. 
Let's look at a different possession type, but the same field position against Scotland. Again, off the edge, the defence press hard, but don't press high on the outside. And Khaleesi and Dialende make an offensive tackle, and this is an essential ingredient to enable a jackal opportunity. Notice that while the ball is in flight from Super Finn's pass, Khaleesi and Dialende shoot hard on Nick Henning. It's essential that they make the tackle ahead of their teammates and they ensure they stop the ball carrier dead in his tracks. That does three key things. It provides a clear picture in front of defenders to help them make good decisions to jackal or to set in defence. It also allows for the springbok table football style movement around the ruck. And finally, it means that the attack have to work back to support the ball carrier, limiting numbers at the ruck, and providing valuable seconds for the jackal to make a decision and then act. Now it's time to look at the jackal itself, and there's a number of consistent features of an effective jackal. Firstly, and this is a legal requirement, the jackler must be able to get onto the ball through the gate before an opposition player is over the ball. And here, Quagga Smith has been able to read the situation thanks to Khaleesi and Pollard making a tackle ahead of the line and the table football movement places him directly in line with the tackle at the moment it's completed. He's the first to arrive, and immediately, in one movement, gets both feet close to the ball carrier. He sinks in his hips and knees, and set outside the shoulder width, and quickly gets his hands on the ball, which helps maintain his balance, now that he's fully bent over, and by the laws of the game, means he doesn't have to let go, even when it becomes a ruck. Notice too, that he's locked his knees onto the ball carrier and also uses his elbows to stabilise himself and help him stay on the ball, even when the collision comes from Adam Beard and the ball is his. Another popular and effective technique uses a backup to support the jackler from falling forwards and to add some weight against the ruck clear, which often arrives at incredibly high force. You, that man, Quagga Smith, as Umbanambi, tight in behind, locked around his waist, and providing support with his legs, and even though the Welsh clearers and Johnny McNichol's placement prevents the jackal, the ball is disrupted, and more slow ball results for Wales. So, as we've seen, even just the threat of a jackal causes the attack to commit numbers to the ruck, giving them fewer attackers on feet, which makes it even harder to break the South African defence. The jackal also slows possession, giving the defence time to set so they can press hard again. Penalties in their own half are golden ways of relieving pressure and gaining ground. And of course, they're a key source of points. And with kickers like Pollard, Stein and Yanches, three pointers quickly accumulate. But as I mentioned earlier, this can of course also be the case for the opposition, if you get it wrong. Like in this example, Umbanambi puts his hands on the ground instead of on the ball and gets penalised for going off his feet. And in this clip, Dialende doesn't release Jonathan Davis before going for the ball and is penalised for not releasing. And I've saved the best use of the jackal until last. We all love to see the fantastic counter-attack opportunities ruck turnovers present, even when there's no penalty awarded. With the scores tied at 3-all at Murrayfield, this deal by Lukanyo Am provides South Africa with the perfect attacking opportunity. The outstanding Quagga Smith is on hand to try and move the ball to space, and with the possible risk of losing the ball, Creel absolutely nails this ruck clear on Stuart Hogg, and from there, the South African attack gets its opportunity to shine, demonstrating the most incredible execution of catch and pass you could hope to see. Because of the turnover, Scotland might well have predicted a kick for South Africa, which is not uncommon, and so stack the left side of the field, which Vili LaRue spots in a flash and moves the ball quickly to Dialende. And just look at this quality carry and pass from Dialende and Colise, creating the smallest of spaces for Mapimpe. Dialende keeps his hip square and head forward to force Richie to bite and importantly, runs through his pass, buying Khaleesi an extra second or two. And again, Khaleesi holds square, keeping eyes forward, before delivering a perfectly timed pass to Mapimpe. And two metres of space is more than enough to set him free. 
I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please do leave me a comment down below and hit the like button to help the channel grow. You'll also find a link to my Patreon in the description if you'd like to see more from the GDD world. Until next time.